Dave, I've made it a rule at these conferences never to disagree with Jamie Oliver. Because the last time I did so, I was put in a pen and pelted with pork pies <laughs> by the media. Uh, but the other day, he said something that made me gulp. Because he was complaining about the work ethic of young people these days. Is he a bit like a sort of da Daily Tele Telegraph editorial? Uh, and he, he didn't, he didn't pull, pull his punches. It's the British, this is what he said, not me, don't, thro don't throw things at me. Uh, it's the British kids particularly, he said. I have never seen anything so wet behind the ears. I have mummies ringing up for 23 year olds saying, my son is too tired for a 48 hour week. Are you having a laugh? The celebrity chef told good housekeeping. And he went on. I can see I'm getting myself in trouble even by quoting this, but never mind. He went on. I think our European migrant friends are much stronger, much tougher. If we didn't have any, all of our restaurants would close tomorrow. There wouldn't be any Brits to replace them. Now I can see looks of apoplectic. Well, no, actually, I can't really. I don't know. <laughs> Where's the apoplexy? I can see look. I can see looks of, of, of sort of sad acknowledgement. That's what I can see. <laughs> Isn't that right? I can see a sort of vague, a, a vague, depressed look of recognition. And I know, uh, and you know, that there are millions of uh, British kids who are as dynamic and young people who are as dynamic and as go-getting and as motivated as any potential uh, millionaire, multi, uh, whatever he's called, master chef. Uh, of course there are. But my question to you is what if Jamie has a point? What if he has half a point or even a quarter of a point? Do you think he does? Half a point, quarter of a point? He's on to something. I mean, he may have phrased it he may have phrased it in a provocative way, but he was saying something that I think resonates, right? Okay, I'm, just, I'm just getting, all my, getting through this with difficulty. <laughs> but if he has a point, then we need to think about what are the possible origins for that difference in motivation that he claims to detect. And we need to think about what we politicians are doing about it, don't we? And if it's to do with welfare, as some people claim it is, then don't we need Ian Duncan Smith to get on with reforming that system and ensuring that you're always better off, better off in work than out of it. And if, and if it's to do with education, as some people claim it is, then don't we need Michael Gove to get on with his heroic work of restoring rigor and realism to the classroom and getting away from the old all must have prizes approach where all pupils must be above average in maths. Pay attention to the back there. Pay attention to the back there, which is not possible. And if, as I'm sure we all think, and, and uh, as I certainly think, the problem is also to do with the confidence and self-esteem of so many of these young people, yeah? Without which ambition is impossible, then isn't it our job as politicians to do everything we can to give them boundaries and solidity to their lives? And that's why I've spent a lot of my time as mayor on projects like the Mayor's Fund for London and Team London and encouraging volunteers to read to kids across our city and mentoring programs which we're expanding and the support of the uniformed groups, I mean the scouts, the guides, all those kinds of fantastic organisations, bringing sporting facilities to schools that don't have any, mobile pools we've been sending around London, beautiful, glorified sheep dips we send around. They absolutely, they, they, they love it. And they work brilliantly, brilliantly well. And we're helping to uh, get talented young musicians to cross that, that barrier uh, that they confront when they reach the age of 11, they have to go through into, into secondary school. And so many of them give up their instruments. It's a real, real tragedy. And uh, we are setting up funds to help uh, with creation of excellence in our schools and to improve standards all around and to support the work that Michael Gove is doing. And when I look at the huge range of, of projects that we're engaged in now in City Hall, together with literally hundreds if not thousands of other projects, many of which are supported by people in this room, 
I do think we are making a difference to the lives of those young people. And we've got loads of them into apprenticeships, about 118,000. You know that statistic, Mark, I'm glad I gave it to you. Um, uh, over the last uh, a couple of years, we're going to get on to 250,000 by, uh, the, the, uh, by 2016. And thanks to the police, and, and thanks very largely to, to their work, we are seeing significant falls in crime, as Jane was, was just saying. Uh, we've seen a big falls in youth violence and in the victims of knife crime, which was uh, such a plague and continues to be a plague uh, on our streets. And it makes my blood boil to read a casual quote from some Labour front bench politician, it may even have been the Shadow Home Secretary, compare, comparing London to Rio de Janeiro. Because we've not only halved youth murders in the last five years, we've got the London murder rate down to levels not seen since the, the 1960s. And uh, you're not only 20 times more likely to be murdered in Rio as you are in London, four times more likely to be murdered in New York, you're twice as likely to be murdered in Brussels, in sleepy old Brussels, as you are in London. <laughs> presumably, presumably with lobster picks. And London <laughs> is in fact now the safest global city in the world. And it's, ob it's not just those uh, crimes such as murder and youth violence that we are significantly reducing. It is all sorts of crime as well. We've got fair evasion fare evasion down on the buses to an all-time low 1.1%, whatever 1.1% means, uh, mainly thanks to getting rid of the bendy buses. And <laughs> that, I think, is the way forward. You've got to, you've got to tackle that, that complex of, of problems. Uh, crime, welfareism, educational underachievement, and you've got to make sure that kids growing up in London are able to take opportunities that are offers and at the same time we must make sure they don't dismiss some jobs as quote unquote menial which is a word I sometimes hear and that they see them those jobs which London creates in such abundance in the same way that Jamie Oliver's East Europeans see those jobs as stepping stones as a, as a beginning to a life in work that can take them Anywhere. Now, I'm conscious today that I've spoken very frankly about this. This issue I've probably got myself, as usual, into trouble. It's my job. Uh, because I think there is a vast and latent genius in these young people. And if we could harness their talents more effectively, then they would not only have fulfilling lives, but we could drive even faster the great flywheel of the London economy that is now the most diverse in Europe.